This video is made for adult collectors because man says let them... I think I already used that joke. I might have already used that joke. Pain. Prime! What the hell are you doing? I'm going to take back Scourge's key and then take off his head. So I finally found this thing at TF Nation and bro I was so happy I did. Lord knows how long it's gonna be till Toys R Us decides to put this on shelves but hey here's Prime. If I sound any different by the way it's because I literally just got back from TF Nation and my voice is still trying to recover from talking to like hundreds of people. Every person I know who has this thing loves it and I was eagerly waiting for it. It did not disappoint. Also I'm gonna top this video off with hey I'm not buying the upgrade kit before anybody asks. It costs more than the toy and I don't do upgrades personally. That's just me. But here is Prime in all his glory and it looks great. Like the robot is so streamlined and proportional, almost exact. It's not 100% exact because haha $35 toy, but it has to transform. And it's still accurate enough, which I think is cool. And I'm in the camp that prefers this over 38 because 38 just looks weird to me. The proportions and the shaping and the concept art parts all over it just look off to me. It also looks too bulky. This seems more refined, which I like. So this guy visually is better looks wise. I can't speak on the quality between him and 38 though because the 38 I have is a knockoff. This is also a partial to 38. It was supposed to be a retool, but they ended up changing it so much that all he shares are parts of the chest and the wheels. It's a completely new toy otherwise, which is amazing to get on a retool budget. He does scale super well with the other items in the line, which is cool. Even most mainline characters, save for Mirage, because I think Mirage is a bit too tall, but that's a Mirage f fault as opposed to Prime. I love the head. One problem I had with the mainline Prime was that his head felt too skinny because of the cavity it has to fit in, but this one feels right. Love all the mask detail on the face and the silver and its range makes the toy feel more expressive. The trigger happy shoulders don't bug me much here because they get out of everything's way almost, and they work fluid enough for me to not notice them most of the time, which is good, because normally they, 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 they get in the way and they just become annoying, but here they don't become annoying as much, which is nice. One problem I do have though, is the hip skirt. If the legs are in very specific spots, they will pop off and go flying, which they did at the bar at TF Nation into someone's ketchup. That was a thing. The weapons are neat. The sword is really cool. I dig the new design and it can slot into the wrist to be accurate in the film. But the gun is something people take issue with because it is small, like very small. But I don't know, to me it makes sense because in the film his cannon was way too big to realistically fill in the arm. So I'm okay with the smaller one, but I know people aren't. So there are other versions of it out there. Now, one cool thing about this prime is it's very poseable. So like, like extremely posable. So before I get into the posing real quick, some, my last pre-order for this month arrived. Monkey. It's the leader class monkey. I'm really excited for this. Anyways. Voyager Opt that's too close. Voyager Optimus has some really nice articulation going on here. Like, it's surprisingly good. It's almost as good as this, and a little bit better than this. And this was already super posable, so this is just, it has more stuff going on. Get out of here. Also, it's it's still not 100% accurate, because, you know. Anyways, the head on this guy is on a ball joint, so you got all that nice range. Shoulders are those weird trigger-happy shoulders, so they bend in weird places, but they go out that far. They do a full 360. Um, in order to get them to move, like, out this way, because they, they don't go this way, you have to, like, get them like this. It, it's a whole it's a whole thing. It makes them a little bit awkward, but here they're a little bit nicer to handle because they also rotate inside the shoulder, so that does help. You have bicep rotation, double bend at the elbow, wrist rotation as well as wrist hinge forward and backwards, which is nice. Waist joint, ab crunch. Sorry, ab crunch, 
move the hip skirts out of the way. The legs are on drop down hips because the way that there's like no room for an actual folding hip skirt to be here. And the way that these hip skirts are done, they probably couldn't do an Earthrise sort of hip or like a mainline style hip because there's no room in there. So what they did was they made a hip joint that's here at the front, not here in the middle. And that allows for a kick that goes around the hip skirt and up that far while also not looking weird, which is very good. I'm, I'm very surprised at how, how well this works. That's, that's very, it's very good. It does limit the backwards mobility a little bit, but the leg still goes back like that far, which is not terrible. Also, like how, how often do you actually move the legs back? I don't when I pose figures. Uh, they can go out about that far. You do have thigh swivel, though the sculpt does bump into things every now and again. You have a little over 90 degrees of ratcheted bend. It's a very soft detent. And then, come on. And then you have ankles that can go down a little bit, up a little bit, ankle pivot, and they do rotate because they're on a ball joint and a hinge. So you can get like a really, really deep pivot out of that if you want to. So he is extremely, ugh, extremely poseable. My figure's hips are a tiny bit loose. They are pinned, but I can probably dab some floor polish in there and just work the joint until it fixes it. But he is very, very poseable, which is extremely cool. I love that. Also, he can hold his sword if you really want him to. He can do that. But yeah, probably, uh, uh, I think I like it more than, it's hard to tell whether posing it, posing this one's more fun than this one, but it is still pretty cool. So the robot is great. It nails everything and is super clean. Now let's make it a vehicular machine with wheels. Now I'm not gonna walk you through the entire transformation as people like MGO and Ball Matrix and tons of other people have shown you that already. And you can watch those if you want to step by step. I'm just gonna point out the things I like because he does a lot of cool things, a lot of interesting things. Like you fold up the hands, right? And, and then a piece of paper over there falls over. Then you undo this, then once you get all this sort of folded in, which sounds horrible when you do it, it makes that weird cracking noise. You bring this up. It does a very MPM thing, like straight up just the same as the Masterpiece movie toy. You rotate this. The way that the arms work, you gotta unfold this whole section right here, flip it down, rotate this in, and then this just sort of shifts around, make sure everything's lined up and that folds up and in, and then this folds down, and then this folds out, and this flips around. That is almost exactly how the Masterpiece movie toy does it, which is really cool because they're able to fit it not only in a toy this small, but also make it feel less clunky because the MPM, while I did really like it, was a little bit clunky in this area. They're able to make it actually work and work well, which is just awesome. Now the back of the truck does sort of do it, it's the most ss38 feeling um with the way that the legs here work so you basically just hold it till it's out of focus there we go you basically just bring these up just like ss38 you fold these around but then you bring the feet in like the mpm bring it in peg it together and then these just sort of come down just like the S38. Come on, peg in. Oh, I missed. It kind of helps if you don't miss the peg. <laughs> eh. This can be a tiny bit frustrating at times because it can be hard to see what you're doing in there. There we go. And then Earthrise out those things. And there you go. Truck. So the truck looks epic until you look at it from the back. But eh, I'm okay with it. I get the whole retool budget thing means some sacrifices have to be made in areas. And yes, I wish it got a full figure treatment so they could slim this down. But for what they had, it looks fine. I mean, there is that upgrade kit, like I said, to change it if you want that. I have seen other people take 38's back parts and slap it on, but I just think that looks a tad bit weird in robot mode. But there are ways to get around this if you don't like it. But personally, I'm okay with it. The back of the truck being skinny, I see people complaining about, but that's actually how it looks in real life. The rest of the truck looks awesome. It looks mean and intimidating, and surprisingly a lot like the MPM with a massive grill. I have seen some people complain about the smokestacks, but I, I don't get it. 
I think they look fine. I don't see the complaint, but that is just me again. If you don't like them, like there are ways to get to like fix it. But like the whole thing is nice. It's a very solid toy and it feels great. And I think it's become my favorite Voyager Prime. Yeah, I think this beats the Hunt for the Decepticons one just a bit for me. And it's my new favorite. It's just a ton of fun. It is an exclusive though. They, it, it, it's unfortunate. They said the reason is because they had already filled both Voyager slots in this Studio Series way, but wanted an Optimus on the shelf to coincide with the film's release. And this was the only way that they could do it was to shove it in Buzzworthy so it could be on the shelf. So I totally get it. And Ben from Hasbro has stated a couple times that they would like to do regular retail releases of this guy in the future. So that will happen because they've done that before with like that one Revenge of the Fallen Studio Series Bumblebee that ended up getting a regular release down the line. So it'll happen. So if you miss out on the exclusive one, you'll be able to get it at some point later on down the line, which is good. But I definitely recommend getting one. It is just so very nice. In the UK, they are super abundant. In the US, they're all over targets. In Canada, uh, good luck, I guess. <laughs> but that's my look at Studio Series Rise of the Beast Optimus. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and I will see you next time. Bye bye